Hi, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today for the Q&A session with Marina Glogovac, our President and CEO at Canada Helps. I'll tell you a little bit about Marina first. Um, first, I want to thank you all for sending your wonderful questions. We've received so many questions, and although we won't be able to get to all of them today, we'll be following up with you um, with the questions that don't get answered today via email. So thank you again for participating and sending them through to us. Next, I'd like to introduce Marina, who will be spending the next hour with us answering some of the excellent questions you've sent in. Marina Glogovac has a 25-year track record of developing high-performance teams, scaling for growth, and building award-winning brands and companies in both the for-profit and non-profit sectors. She is passionate about charities and their essential role in Canada and has been invested in building the capacity of the charitable sector through cutting-edge technology and high-quality education in her role as CEO at Canada Helps since 2013. Under her leadership, Canada Helps has grown rapidly, doubling overall donations and dramatically expanding its software and success strategies for both charities. Marina is an in-demand public speaker and a regular contributor to publications such as the Huffington Post Canada. She's also a member of the Canada Revenue Agency's Charities Directorate Technical Issues Working Group, which facilitates discussion between the CRA and the charitable sector. Marina's previously worked for leading digital and media brands, including Lava Life Corp, Kobo Inc., and St. Joseph's Media, and served on a number of for-profit and charity boards and advisory committees. We'll just take a moment to get uh, Marina uh, set up with the headset, and uh, we'll get started very shortly. Um, hi there. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm super, super excited to be here. Uh, talking to all of you, it's not as good as one-on-one -on -one and seeing each other, but, you know, I think it will be uh, useful and, and, and good. And um, I think we have over 700 charities uh, here with us today. Um, I started with Canada Helps in May of 2013, so it's nearly been five years. And I wanted to share some reflections on my time here. Um, I wanted to talk a bit more about uh, what Canada Helps is today and where is it going. And we thought about holding this webinar for the first time because, you know, we wanted everyone to have the opportunity to hear directly from me and from us and also to answer some of your questions because we always get uh, a lot of questions uh, through different means, but um, we thought that this could be a good idea. And I'm joined today by one, by one of the key members of our team, uh, Shannon Craig. Uh, Shannon is our Chief Marketing and Chief Product Officer. She was one of my first hires when I started. Uh, we worked together before in the for-profit world, and I just knew that she would be the right person for the incredible challenge that uh, we were facing four years ago. Um, Shannon has a long history in technology companies, but with this role, she's also fulfilling her lifelong passion to give back in her career. And at Canada Health, she's responsible for our product and our marketing. So she's the one worrying about how to develop the great product uh, for you guys at the affordable rate and, you know, how to involve more Canadians in giving. And, you know, when I look back uh, in my career, I spend most of it in the for-profit sector as a media and technology executive. I've always been involved with charities, sitting on boards and, and being connected to them. And I personally, through my family and personal life, have a connection with a couple of smaller charities. But I have to say that this has still been just a huge learning curve for me um, on many, many levels. And one thing that I didn't know uh, and that took me by surprise is just how much more would I personally get committed to the charitable sector and especially to smaller charities in Canada and how much more I would learn about them and how much more I would become incredibly inspired by so many people that I met in my uh, visits with charities, and I have uh, personally visited, uh, you know, well over 200 by now. So today I can say that this is my dream job. Uh, it's, it's my sweet spot as well because it allows me to work on one of my most enduring passions, which is to democratize access to you know, tools, to education, to the know-how, to capital, 
And I just happen to think that access is one of the root cause of so many issues and suffering that plagues the world today. Um, I still feel like an outsider, um, for sure, uh, but I'm really committed to being honest and to bringing the voice of smaller charities to the various initiatives that I either co-launched or participated in, such as, you know, like a day on the hill. Um, I've also recently became a member of the CRA Technical Issues Committee, which is their kind of community consultation program. And for me, again, it's very important that I can learn more about charities and that also I can bring that voice of our many charity partners to the table. And I'm very, very proud of what we accomplished in the last four years, just how much we strengthen our organization, how much we strengthen our overall skill set, and very importantly to you, how much we strengthen and build our product development capacity. We have been launching and improving things at incredible speed and really working really hard and with a huge sense of urgency. Um, I think, you know, in reflecting back that our tools have been successful. I think that we have enabled a lot of smaller charities to access new revenue streams through different tools that we launch peer-to-peer -peer events and that uh, that has saved them some time and money and also enabled them to become uh, more sophisticated. Um, many of you will know that we also co-launched co Giving Tuesday Canada, which has grown to be uh, a big initiative with you know over 6,000 partners and a lot of uh, a big growth in donations. And that we also invested a lot in our uh, educational capacity. We today, you know, in, in our kind of access to know-how and education, we have so many uh, webinars and white papers and blogs and often our webinars are um, listened to by hundreds uh, of charities and we're very proud of that of that work because uh, that's also part of the core core mission. Uh, we've grown our staff when I started in 2013 we were 11 or 12 and we're over 40 today. Uh, half of our staff is uh, our software engineers and related roles so this is very important to our capacity to develop product and to maintain and improve what we have both on our direct side and of what we offer to you guys. Um, we have a customer service staff, five people. We have a charity engagement team which is um, headed by Paul Nazareth who couldn't be here with us today and their job is to really connect with charities across the country. We have a marketing team with five people. Uh, we have a data and analytics team which has done great work and I see them as uh, being fundamental to our <clears throat> future success. We're planning to add some more people on that team. And we have a small uh, finance and operations team. But again, most of our team is in the tech. And, um, you know, when I look at the landscape that charities exist in today, I really see to be honest, a lot of challenges coming ahead, uh, especially for small charities in Canada. And this is because of all the changes we're witnessing, because of the change in technology, the changes in giving, the blurring of the lines, and all the other things that, that we talk about and that we read in various research. And, uh, you know, for me personally, as, um, you know, CEO of Canada Helps, I, I really, what keeps me up at night is that, you know, I want to make sure that we can continue to keep up with the demands of the Times and of all of you and our other charity partners and other charities in Canada and that we're able to continue to deliver you know solid and competitive solutions and you know that incorporate best practices in you know e-commerce and product development at a very affordable cost and that we're also able to communicate with more and more Canadians about uh, the importance and relevance of the charitable sector because that's what we firmly believe in. Shannon, do you want to say hi? Hi there. I'm so pleased to be here with you today and look forward to um, answering a few of your questions. Okay, let's get into the questions. Uh, the first question uh, for Marina is from a charity. What are the key trends that charities should be thinking about today? Um, well, I mean, we all know, just to set, uh, set sort of the, the, the broader context for this question, which is, you know, it's an important question, and I really 
believe and know that we live in an era of disruptive innovations, of creative destruction. There are just a lot of things happening. And, you know, we often talk about this in the context of technology. And we all know from other parts of our lives that there has been a very broad technology propelled upheaval across the board in the, in the last couple of decades. And that many, many, many sectors, media, travel, retail, publishing, music, um, have been completely transformed, you know, many of them wiped out, weakened, uh, replaced by, you know, some other ones that we didn't even know could exist before. And I think philanthropy is definitely getting affected as well, maybe at a slower rate. Uh, what I also often say is that all these changes are not just about new products or new technologies or new, uh, you know, ways to do things. They really are about, about fundamental rewriting of the rules of engagement and the business and the enablement of, of, of some different roles that, uh, you know, around who, who can do what, who can compete with whom and under what circumstances. And one of them is really about, you know, who can do charitable work. Uh, the key drivers of many, many of these are, as we often read and, and talk about, our demographic shifts with millennials and the generations after them coming into a fuller power. I mean, definitely millennials will be more than half a workforce in Canada by, in, you know, in, in, in less than two years. They're coming into, you know, full professional maturity and purchasing power and will absolutely become a more dominant force. And we know that they have a lots of, you know, different... Uh, taste and expectations and this is definitely the generation that has completely that has grown with internet and technology. Um, we also know that the shifts in the last two decades have put unprecedented power in the hands of the consumer and in our case donors on many different levels and the donor or consumer today is in the driver's seat like never before and you know their preferences, their expectations, their acceptance and adoption will continue to drive changes regardless of whether we like it or not. Uh, we know that there is an absolute ubiquity and proliferation of connective devices, broad availability of internet. It has really taken over the world. Uh, you know, the smartphones globally, 91% uh, ownership and other stats. So this will continue to really uh, both you know, break the barriers of entry and make it harder uh, for people to be in this space. Um, we also are witnessing incredible increasing volumes and availability of data, and that has that has been driving you know a whole new spaces like artificial intelligence and what what we call big data. Uh, we have massive amounts of real-time data that are being uploaded with mobile devices, with sensors, with wearable, wearable technology. And data, I think, will have a very profound uh, effect on philanthropy. It may not happen overnight. I think it will enable problem solving. Um, it, 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 will, it will definitely be very consequential, and so, so will the charity's ability to really play in that space. Uh, with some of these driving forces, we've seen also some trends. One that, you know, again, we're all aware is democratization of content generation. Uh, everyone today is a publisher or, or author, or, or it can be a storyteller. Everyone, everyone can be an authority. Uh, we see this with blogs, bloggers, with YouTube celebrities, with citizen journalism, with forums, and, and more. We're also all aware of the unprecedented scale and reach of the social communities, which are huge. Uh, they really are becoming a global powerhouses of influence. And they are driving in an ever-increasing share of purchases online. And now, as we again read uh, and know even from our own uh, stats here at Canada Hubs donations. Person-to-person uh, -person phenomena for me is actually one of the most fascinating ones that has emerged in the last couple of decades. And, and what that is, is through different person-to-person -person technologies. Uh, and, you know, you could view social networks as one of them, you know, peer-to-peer -peer lending, uh, payments, uh, user and consumer reviews, and relevant to charities, crowdfunding. The person-to-person -person has really set this whole new space that basically says, we are influenced by friends and family, and others like us. That's who we trust, and that's who has authority. The authority has been taken away 
from institutions and from sort of traditional authority sources. And um, all of this has really impacted charities. Uh, I really see a huge blurring of the lines between profit and non-profit, the, you know, social entrepreneurship and emergence of social finance. You know, government is setting a policy on social finance right now. It's in the process of consultation. Impact investments, the, the triple bottom line that a for-profit corporations talk about, you know, new legal entities like B Corps and, you know, triple C Corps, which is now available in, in BC. You know, the changing role of corporation and all of this really driven partially at least by preferences of that younger generation for causes and not necessarily for institutions and by their agnosticism toward the legal structure of the entity that does the charity. Uh, we know that online and mobile giving is growing at a far, far greater pace than the offline giving and that is set to become a dominant method of giving within the next decade and various studies and donor studies confirm that. Um, the crowdfunding has been absolutely meteoric. Uh, I've never seen in my long history as a technology and consumer tech um, uh, professional, I've never seen a space emerge and become such a huge space. I think it's close to $17 billion in North America in such a short time. But it really tells us a lot about the preferences and expectations of the current a user or donor, and we know that only about a quarter or maybe a third at best of this money is going to charities. And, you know, this is all happening while we know the charitable giving in Canada is going down or is flat at best in the last in the last uh, few years. Thank you, Marina. So, so in this complex environment you're describing, how can you set yourself apart? Well, I mean, people often say about me that I tell, tell it like it is. <laughs> And honestly, you know, and this is coming from a for-profit world, you know, lots of experience, you know, with a lot more resources to do things, it's hard, it's hard, and it's getting harder all the time because of the competition and the fragmentation is so huge. And another thing is that there is no silver bullet. There is nothing I can say today that is a silver bullet because there isn't, there is no silver bullet. But there are a couple of things that I think will be core and very important to uh, charity succeeding in this new era. You know, one, the first one, I touched upon it in the previous question, is that from a donor engagement point of view, charities have absolutely the best and the most engaging content, which for the most part is super under leveraged. For-profit companies struggle to generate engaging content and they're willing to pay a lot for it, right? And charities have it. So charities should re really be the best storytellers around. But in what I've seen, they often are not. And I think that's partially because of the decades-old underinvestment in their own capacity. Because when we really look at impact, um, impact is data and impact is stories. And I would even venture to say that a more you know, more transformative and consequential part of the impact is the stories. Yes, it's great, and charities will have to start attaching data for it. They will, have, they will have to start tracking data, attaching data. But I think the storytelling, the primacy of the storytelling is really what is truly transformative in, in our human journey, really. And it has been like that from the beginning. Um, so I think it's very important for charities to kind of engage in this difficult work of kind of deconstructing and reconstructing how they talk about what they do. I think actually they all should very decisively move towards that, this kind of impact orientation uh, position because um, I, I just am convinced from everything that I've seen and read that that's going to be one of the core things. Another core thing, and this is maybe more difficult to talk about, and this is one that we really, really are trying to do something about and to do our share, and that is really for charities to develop a much better, much more robust infrastructure and a know-how in a digital and data space, right? Because that will just become very important. And, you know, technology and platforms and apps are all breaking barriers, uh, barriers, barriers to access. But unfortunately, the know-how is relatively scarce because everybody else also wants this know-how and expensive. And, um, 
you know, it, 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 again, it will be hard, but, you know, that's not to say that we should ever give up because of, you know, what we do. Um, I think a lot of charities' success will depend on their, acquire, on their ability to acquire, to nurture and retain donors online because giving is moving online. And this is, this is sort of a core capacity. And none of this can really happen, and I'm very, very clear about this, if charities do not themselves first start investing in themselves and taking risks and really pushing their boards to understand and support that. And I really uh, believe that if this doesn't happen, if this kind of jump and leap into a far more sophisticated digital and data kind of level, uh, that many charities will struggle to survive and be effective in the upcoming era. Okay, great. Thank you, Marina. So we're going to switch to Shannon for the next few questions. And um, the next question is related to the importance of having digital know-how, as you spoke about, um, Marina. So, Shannon, what are the top three things I should be doing to succeed in today's digital world? Thanks, Cindy. Um, first off, speaking to just three things when it comes to digital success is a challenge. Um, Cindy is sharing a link uh, to a talk I gave at uh, the Maytree Foundation and this, this past fall at one of their luncheons, um, if you'd like to go deeper. But for now, here are three key takeaways from that session. First off, um, to succeed in digital, invest in your website. Today, about 10% of donation dollars are received online, and online donations are outpacing growth in overall donations by a factor of five. And your website is critical to growing both online and offline donations. Just keep these stats in mind. 41% of your donors visit your website to do research before making their first gift. This increases to 90% for your major donors. So your website is your primary building block to digital success um, in fundraising. And it requires continued investment. So what I'd suggest is start um, Start by looking at your top visited pages and remember these rules. You have three seconds from the time someone arrives at your site to capture their attention. And then at most, you have 30 seconds to convince them to stick around. That's not much time. So your key to success is to focus, um, is really to focus and to know the paths or the funnels as we often call them, you want your visitor to take and you need to have clear calls to action to guide them. So uh, on the screen, we're showing uh, Food Share Toronto's homepage. And I think they've done a nice job at sharing what they do and their impact, and then providing those three clear calls to actions. Buy a gift basket, donate, or learn more. So that's a great example for you. Moving on to number two uh, tip that I'd give for digital success, um, get mobile optimized. So today, more than 50% of web traffic is now from a mobile device, and you really need to ensure that your website and your donation forms are mobile optimized. According to Google, 61% of visitors will not visit your site again if they experience accessibility issues, and 40% of those are going to go to a competitor. Here's another reason to get serious about mobile. The average website gets 38% of its traffic from organic search engines like Google. And Google is so serious about mobile that they are soon moving to a mobile-first index. This means they will rank search results listings based on the mobile version of your site. If your site is not mobile optimized, this will have dramatic negative impact on visits to your site. So it's time to get serious about your website and mobile. And moving on to tip number three for success in the digital world, it's really about getting into your data and letting data insights guide your digital. So the reality of digital is that fundraisers and marketers need to be comfortable with data. Um, we need to think like e-commerce businesses. Uh, so just, just a couple high, high things, high level things here. Get into your donor data. No matter where you are, start simple and start piecing it, uh, just start delving into it. So you want to start to try and understand how are you doing in terms of donor retention? How are you serving new versus repeat donors? And what is, and, and it starts to 
just formulate the key things that are going to drive your fundraising success and delve into your day for the answers. So start to understand the path that donors take typically before they become a monthly donor with you, and then learning how to cultivate more monthly donors based on that data. Also get right into Google Analytics to understand. Um, so Google Analytics is a free tool. It is my favorite analytics tool. Um, it lets you see who's coming to your website, where they're coming from, what they're doing there, and where they're dra dropping off. Basically, it tells you where you need to do your work to, to have stronger results. Um, so get into your data is point number three. And I just wanted to call out one of our uh, newest tools here. We do have a tool for Google Analytics, um, for using Google Analytics to track the results of your customizable donation form. It's a comprehensive white paper and a dashboard, and I highly recommend you donate it, uh, download it to get started. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and um, just introduce the next question. The next few questions are actually for me. So the next question I have is, uh, and numerous people ask us, how can I raise more through the Canada Help site for donors? So the site where Canadians can donate or phone fundraise for any charity. And before I answer this question, I just really want to clarify what this uh, particular question is geared towards, because Canada Helps has two core lines of service. We have our customizable fundraising tools for charities to use on their website and in their charity-driven fundraising appeal, appeals. These include our customizable donation forms, our peer-to-peer -peer platform, and our ticketed events platform. These are tools um, that put your charity's brand first. We also have our direct-to-donor website, where Canadians can discover, donate, and fundraise for any charity. Every charity automatically has a profile on Canada Helps, and with a free Canada Helps account, charities can manage and promote their charity more effectively on Canada Helps. So now to answer the question, how can I raise more through the Canada Help site for donors? So again, simply put, our donor site is an amazing free promotional opportunity for your charity. And to maximize this opportunity and raise more, you need to take the time to effectively manage your charity's profile. Um, you can see from the chart here, the key to success is taking advantage of all the opportunities. So the more features that you take advantage, the, the more our data shows that you're going to raise more. Um, and so I'm just going to highlight a few of the things that you can do on our direct donor site and a couple of things that make you succeed even further. So um, in the meantime, Cindy is going to share a link that will provide you with step-by-step how-to information on managing your profile. But here are the top tips. So first up, a winning profile page has strong, clear needs and results-based copy with strong imagery. You can see there, there's, there's several images, and we have some nice copy there on um, uh, the charity profile page. In addition, you have the ability to share your impact story and results, and I highly recommend that you add this impact information. Donors love these pages. We develop them based on the feedback that donors were asking for. This is what they want to hear from you. It's what Marina was just talking about in terms of sharing your impact story. It's a very flexible tool. Um, we make it easy to share the information that you have available today. So uh, you can pick and choose what you share, but definitely do your best to populate this. And also know that donors love this so much, we've actually started to regularly look for new impact pages on our site and to feature charities with strong impact pages in our emails to our list of donors of over 470,000 Canadians who um, are on our email list that choose to uh, give to charities through our direct-to-donor site. Two more tips for you. Add campaigns. You can have many. So on Canada Helps, um, we give you the ability to launch and share your campaigns. It's an excellent way to get discovered by new donors as they show up um, in our Browse Charity Campaigns area. And many donors arrive at our site looking and to learn and explore charities. And so having your campaigns there is, is an excellent way to get discovered. And you can also launch campaigns tagged as a charitable gift. And these gifts will show up in our charitable gift guide that we often are promoting at times of holiday um, times, uh, whether it's that be the holiday, the, the core holiday season, um, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and so forth. So get some gifts in the gift guide. 
And if your campaign is uh, time sensitive or has a specific fundraising goal, be sure to share it um, and include it on your page to add that sense of urgency and to really catch um, attention when people are browsing this area of our site. And the final recommendation is to set your search settings. So these preference settings are super easy to set up. It, it's allowing us to know what categories and what type of work you do as a charity, what type of mission work you do. And it's really important um, that you set these so that when people um, filter their search results, choose to browse by charity category, you show up in the search results. And as well, so that we can begin to know enough about you that we can service your charity when you're receiving a lot of donations and you show up in our popular now or personalized discovery recommendation services that are our new data services that we're surfacing in various parts of our site, such as the home page, donation confirmation page, and that we're seeing a lot of donors respond to. All right. So that's the direct donor side. And the next question, we had a lot of questions about this. So what are your top tips for using Canada Helps to maximize the effectiveness of my charity's fundraising appeals? Um, and so for your fundraising efforts, again, this is where you use the customizable donation forms, peer-to-peer, -peer, and ticket events. These are the tools that, unlike our direct donor site, have no distractions from your campaign. It's all about you, and it's all about your brand. Um, Cindy right now is sharing uh, a couple of links with you. These are links um, to what's new or just about to come out from our customizable for our customizable donation forms and our peer-to-peer -peer platform. There's a ton that's new. So for customizable donation forms, we have our new multi-step donation form. We've made dramatic improvements to our mobile experience to take advantage of new uh, capabilities to use the full mobile screen. We've enhanced um, the custom branded e-card experience and on the peer-to-peer -peer side, we've dramatically streamlined peer-to-peer sign-up. Um, and these are just some of the new features available, but there's a ton more that's coming very soon. And so I really would encourage you to look at what's coming because these are the keys to raising more through our tools is, is the new features that we've added. Um, in getting to some very specific tips, um, here are the big ones we like to talk to um, when we go out to charities. Um, we will, I love to just remind you, you have the ability to launch unlimited forms and unlimited peer-to-peers and unlimited ticket events. So what this means is we highly recommend that you create more pages and more events, customize each one for the, specifically to your appeal. So if you're going out to your supporters with a monthly donation appeal, be sure to direct them to a monthly first donation form that's really relevant and um, streamline specifically to the appeal you've just made. Um, if you're doing a fundraising for a specific program or campaign, customize the imagery and, co and copy. This is all what's going to help you increase the number of people that just don't just come to the page, but ultimately make a donation. If your website is mobile optimized, be sure to embed your form so donors never leave your site. If it's not mobile as optimized, Make sure you're just linking to the Canada Health page, which is mobile optimized and will protect that donor experience. Turn on our new smart sums, uh, sorry, our new smart sums algorithm. I'm so excited about this algorithm. It's a, it's a data algorithm that basically looks at um, past donations to your charities based on the time of year or charities similar to you and uh, basically automatically suggests what specific gift amounts um, for one-time donation and monthly donations. And uh, by presenting those pre-suggested amounts, we can actually inspire donors to make larger gifts. And you can turn these on on your CDN pages just with a check of a box. So highly recommend you do that. And finally, we've been working really hard on our free white papers. Um, and there's a ton of amazing tips. Um, so there we have several different white papers available from launching your first peer-to-peer -peer campaign to how to grow your monthly donors program. And I highly recommend you take advantage of all of those. Okay, so um, the next question is quite interesting and I thought it was just a great question. It says, how do you determine your product strategy to decide what new products and tools to launch? Um, this is a big question, but effectively we maintain two streams of ongoing decisions. Um, our team is currently involved in a strategic planning process that will provide the framework for our product strategy for the next three to five years. 
um, operating within our strategic uh, framework, we then maintain a rolling one-year product roadmap. Um, creating an effective product strategy really requires that we are constantly listening and researching. So what we do is we invest heavily in research and consulting with advisors to stay on top of not just the latest fundraising trends, but the latest technology trends. We track traditional and emerging software, CRM, and, fu and fundraising software vendors in Canada and globally. And we monitor what charities uh, we know are constantly testing and optimizing to see what, uh, what, what shifts are happening and what's working. And then we also participate and attend some really key industry events like the DMA and then week-long conference um, put on by the U.S. Data and Marketing Association is just one of my favorites. Uh, we attend the one specifically for no nonprofits as well as the one for for-profit companies as they are invaluable conferences for tracking e-commerce best practices and trends. All that said, our primary driver of our product strategy is the voices of the charities that we serve. We have invested heavily in building our charity and donor relations customer care team and our charity engagement team that are in constant contact with charities. And I'm just so pleased that in the last year and a half, two years, we have implemented a really effective system to ensure that all of the input we receive is captured and reviewed and fed into our roadmap um, regularly. On top of that day-to-day -day contact, we do conduct an annual product research study. For the last two years, we've done it. It happens in April, and we'll, of course, be doing it again this year. And this is what guides our roadmap. It is so important that you participate. We really can't do it without you. And uh, so please watch for that study that will be coming out uh, in April. So with all this information, um, we share it. We, our technical, analytics, marketing, finance, and charity engagement, engagement teams are involved in, in the roadmap process. Um, and we shape our roadmap first and foremost in terms of the demand from our charities and an assessment of what will help charities most. And then we balance this with the feasibility, sustainability, and other operational considerations. So that's uh, what we're doing for roadmap. And um, the final question that I'll be answering today is, what is on your, uh, what is on your product roadmap? and what's on the horizon. Okay, <laughs> so this is the stuff that I know you're really anxious to hear. So at Canada Health, we release new products every two weeks. Um, however, from a marketing perspective, we have started pre-announcing what's coming for our core products um, up front so you can learn about all that's coming in one easy digestible way um, so that it's easier for you to keep up. Um, we are right now in the final stages of our major advancements for our customizable donation pages. The remaining things to come that are coming this quarter are our Tribute First Giving Form, print and foldable e-cards, and our quick checkout process, which um, will help to optimize the number of donations you receive, making it faster for donors to check out. For peer-to-peer, -peer, we've already released the new sign-up flow. Um, and by end of May, we'll have much more um, out as well, um, from enhancements to the design to the thing that one of the things that I'm most excited about, the ability for you as a charity admin to set default um, participant and team captain page imagery, fundraising goals, and descriptions. By doing this, you can allow your participants to sign up super fast. It's so easy for sign up. And you can also ensure that all of the pages in your peer-to-peer -peer campaign are there to inspire donations. They've got that copy they need and the imagery to inspire donations. There's a ton more coming, and that's all at that landing page that uh, Cindy sent to you earlier. In terms of our ticketed events, we will uh, be announcing just a, more details around what's coming uh, in March. But here's a couple quick peeks. Um, first off, we're going to be providing you the ability to embed your event ticketed event page right on your website. So the same functionality that you're used to with your customizable donation forms for embedding them on your website is coming to events. Um, and something that we're super excited about is we will be launching comprehensive offline ticket support. Um, so what this means is you'll have the option to add tickets that you sell offline You'll be able to add uh, those into your fundraising progress. 
you'll be able to optionally issue a receipt for offline tickets and even choose to optionally send uh, event reminders to offline ticket purchasers. Next, um, it's securities. So at Canada House, we've been seeing securities growing at 47% year over year. If your charity is not uh, making it clear from your ways to give page today that you can accept securities by using our Donate Securities Now button, I highly recommend you leave this call and do so. Um, but uh, the Donate Securities Now button that we have today, it's a good interim solution. But what I'm excited to announce today is that in late spring, we will begin work on a streamlined, customizable security donation form. So it's a form that will bring all the branding and embed features that you're used to with customizable donation forms to securities. Um, and then over the last few years, we have focused a lot on launching new products and a lot on the donor experience. Um, you know, more recently, we made some improvements to our charity admin interface, um, such as a refreshed design around uh, creating new customizable donation forms. That's and I'm excited to say that this summer we will begin working on some more significant enhancements to our charity administrative um, account. So offering simplified navigation, organization, streamlined creation of campaigns, and better reporting. And last but not least, we have spoken to many charities about the pain points of donor relationship management. We know that there is a huge gap in the market for a CRM that is right sized and right price for charities. We are now actively working on a Canada Health CRM solution. The solution will be delivered sometime in 2019, and we expect to be able to share launch timelines with you in late March. So I hope that helps give you insights into what's coming. And now I'll, I'll, I'll turn it back to Cindy. Thank you so much for answering that, Shannon. Uh, the next question is for Marina. Marina Shannon spoke to us about the existing products on the horizon, and we have a great question from a charity related to the pricing of those products. And the charity asks, how does your pricing work? Thanks, Cindy. So this is, this is a really good question. And um, I mean, I can really say that it's important to me personally that we're completely 100% transparent with both donors and charities about our pricing, which is why we include all the details on our website. Um, I look at pricing, and I did that when I was uh, in, in a for-profit, I look at various, the ways various companies express their pricing and their rates, and I often really shake my head because uh, it's often very opaque. Uh, you know, you have to do the math, you have to be sophisticated to really kind of put it all together and model it. Uh, credit card fees are over here, uh, per transaction fees are over there, you know, the setup fees, the monthly fees. We really try not to play any of those games. Uh, we try to be straightforward and when, I mean, this is of course a longer answer, but when we say our fees are all inclusive and it is all that it is, um, it is because that fee, for example, we charge 4% for all donations that are made on our canadahelps.org by Canadians that we drive to that site. So that fee, it's all there is, there is nothing else, and in that fee, there is a part that we have to pay to credit card, uh, credit cards for processing the payment, so this is a must. There is really simply no way to go around it. And also to a payment processing company. In our case, um, it's a Chase Payment Tech, and there are many, many other ones. Around Moneris would be another one. And so the credit card processing fees, uh, we negotiated really good ones because of volume, but they would normally be starting at like 1.6% uh, and up, depending on the card that is used. Um, unfortunately, the more the premium cards are charged, the more, and this is really where the consumers are going. And then there is a cut that a payment chase has. So after that's paid, we then uh, are left normally with somewhere between 1.8 and 2.2 percent, and this is really what funds our entire uh, organization. So as I said, the donations made through CanadaHelps.org are 4 percent. However, if people who come to CanadaHelps.org and want to set up monthly donations, we wanted to provide incentive for that uh, because we know that it's very important and it's really a great revenue stream for charities. So we are charging only 3.5 percent for that. Um, donations made through 
forms that we give you, our custom, customizable donation forms that you use on your website to process online donations and other tools that, uh, that we may offer you for the customizable donation form, we charge 3.5%, right? So again, this is an all-inclusive rate and there is nothing else, um, no monthly fee, no setup fee, no per transaction fee, which is very common in the space. And um, we really want charities to use these customizable donation forms because that is the best practice. That is the best practice from the point of view of conversion um, into a donation, and we have data to support that. Many charities link from their website the Donate Now button to the profile on Canada Helps. But we discourage that because a lot, you know, people are lost in that transition. It's much, much better uh, to set up a proper um, donation form that looks like your, way, your website on your website. And as I said, we have data that says uh, that when charities do that, they raise on average about 70% more just because it's, a, it's an optimized way to do it. Um, we have we charge uh, you know between two and three percent on the donation of securities depending uh, on the size of the gift and that also is inclusive of the broker fee because of course there is a broker and a whole system in the back end that processes this um, uh, that that we have to you know pay a cut for and believe me we always try to really negotiate the best possible rate in all of this uh, in all of these cases and then for some other newer platforms that we launched like peer to peer fundraising third party fundraising events platform uh, the fees are between 4.5 and 4.9 percent they're incredibly competitive relative to what's offered out there and I personally think they're like the best value for the money. The reason these fees are higher uh, is to reflect a, a very significant investment that we had to make to develop them. I mean in the case of peer-to-peer -peer, it took us like a year and a half to code and develop this um, and also continual you know updating, maintain it, maintaining and uh, you know, new features, new versions that we have to that we have to keep up with uh, in order to <clears throat> to make sure that smaller charities have uh, have good tools. And you know, at the end of the day, we're a charity, and we uh, spend everything that we make. We put it right back into the organization. We have been able to grow and to basically be able to do more for the charities and the charitable sector. And um, you know, there has been a really growing demand, which is why we've grown, and I feel very lucky that we've been able to do that. But, you know, at the end of the day, everything we make, we, 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 we keep a bit of a reserve because I don't want to be surprised by, you know, some technology glitch, but um, that's pretty much how we're operating. We're, we're fairly lean for the size of the, you know, the, the donations that we process. Canada Helps has made a huge contribution to the charitable sector. What is Canada Helps doing to ensure its capacity? Well, this is definitely, you know, one of the things that keeps me up at night, as I mentioned before. The technology, uh, the cost of talent, uh, it's rising. <clears throat> it's, it's, very, it's a fairly complex environment, and I really am here to make sure that Canada Helps can continue to deliver and to grow and to meet the demands and you know again in in you know to be honest well me uh, me and us we struggle like any other charities with our own limitations and lack of funding and um, and that's really also why we understand charities it's not just because we serve charities it's not because we absolutely love and adore charities but because we are a charity ourselves at the end of the day um, we did a lot in the last four years to retool the team to fit kind of what we needed to do we hired uh, new ex expertise in marketing and e-commerce and technology, software, data, product development. Uh, we work very hard here, a uh, huge sense of urgency. Uh, we really try, as Shannon said, to stay on top of what's going on and always try to answer this question. We try to be really sober and practical because we're always trying to answer the question, is this something that can help our charities? Or charities become more self-sustainable today and and really the emphasis is on today and now we really try to to do that uh, you know versus for example working on something that may be perceived as cool and sexy for its own sake we 
we're kind of not into that. And a good example of that is just how much money, how much time and money we spend on mobile optimizing all of our forms, which again, it's not full and sexy, but we thought that it was incredibly important. Um, you know, another thing of growing investment and concern, and really, I want to make sure that we're uh, that we're 100% reliable is the area of safety and security. We process a lot of money every day. Um, we are uh, guaranteeing the security of our system. There is a lot of work that we put into understanding the involving environment, how, you know, getting advice from lawyers, from third-party advisors. We maintain the highest level of PCI compliance. And this is something we have to pass every year. So it's not something that is given to us and then never again. It's like, and it's actually the bar raises every year because of the increased cyber security concerns kind of across the board. Um, and I think that's one thing that I often uh, would maybe like people to understand more is just how much we actually need to invest into this whole technology infrastructure, into the know-how and not just in building new software and designing products, uh, but also, you know, maintaining, improving, and fixing what we have. And we, I also really believe that our values drive our capacity. Um, and I always believe that. Uh, and we invested into building the organization, the culture, the values. Um, I think for me, the most important values here that enable us to continue to have capacity are, first of all, the passion for what we do, um, our full sense of accountability, and, and a sense of urgency. We do have a huge sense of urgency. And finally, I'm really pleased to actually uh, see how much we have been able to accomplish in affecting and shaping the public perception about charities in Canada. I mean, we have a long way to go as a sector. But in a way, Canada Helps is a unique charities or a sector engagement platform, and we have been growing the number of people who are engaging uh, with charities through Canada Helps. And so we are in a position, I think Shannon mentioned the, the, the size of the list, we are in a position to influence how Canadians think. And this is one area which is a strong competency for me and for Shannon and the rest of our team. And we have generated thousands of media stories um, and in these stories, and, and in my interviews at least, we push the message of the relevance of the sector and the relevance of charities investing in themselves pretty hard. Um, you know, we use the voice that we've developed for the benefits of all charities. And this is a piece that maybe it's not completely evident at the, at the outset. And, and it's the hardest piece, right? Because I think how we'll all ensure that we can continue to build capacity for the entire sector is to really work on it also on the level of influencing Canadians in how they view what we do and you know allowing us to invest into our our own capacity and you know build the ecosystem of supporting each other in Canada in a way that is just and fair for all and you know that will be fair for our children so this is one thing that we actually spend I don't know if I can call it advocacy but it is a form of advocacy that we do in, in, in pushing that message, right? Especially in today's environment where, as I said, lines are blurring and, you know, sometimes the lines in the, are not, not clear. So um, I'm very proud of that. Marina, Shannon, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you to everyone listening in presenting your questions. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. If we didn't answer your questions on this call, we'll be following up with you by email soon. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be emailing the webinar slides and reporting to you in case you'd like to reference them or share them. Enjoy the rest of your day.